In this video, I'm going to quickly walk through creating a clustered storage space. In this test environment, I have two Dell servers connected to a Dell MD1200. And in it, I've got about 12 drives, nine of them one terabyte hard disk drives and three 400 gig SSD drives. So this is going to let me use storage space tiering. Here I can see the two nodes in the cluster. And if I go into Disk Manager, I'll see all those drives just available currently not being used. Now, if I was using redundant paths from my servers to the storage enclosure, I would need to make sure MPIO has been installed and executed to remove those redundant views of the storage. If I go to PowerShell, I can actually go ahead and look at all the disks that are attached via SAS. So I see I've got those 12 drives, three of them, SSDs, 400 gig. And also I can check all the ones that I could actually pull. So it's those same drives. Once you apply this hotfix, 2913766 from Microsoft, this improves the manageability of storage enclosures. So I get actually a new commandlet, get storage enclosure. And I can do format list to get more information, but here I can see that storage enclosure is healthy. And that's really, at this point, I can see the same drives from both my nodes in the cluster. So I created the cluster, they're both connected to it via SAS cards. And so I can see the same storage on both machines. I would now actually go into Failover Cluster Manager, go to Pools, and I'm going to create a new storage pool. So I'm just going to call this Clustered Storage Pool. It's going to show me all the disks available. And you'll notice that it's showing me they're all in that enclosure. So I'll select them all, click Next, and it's now creating this pool. Once this is finished, the next thing I'm going to want to actually go ahead and do is create a storage space or a virtual disk within this new storage pool. Because all I've done right now is add disks into the pool. I've taken all the disks in that storage enclosure and made them available as part of this clustered storage pool. Once this is finished, I'll also be able to see this in Server Manager. So if I go into Server Manager, currently you can see all the disks are just in the primordial pool. But once this has gone ahead and been created, I'll be able to refresh this and it will now actually show that storage pool I created in Cluster Manager. So it's now completed and I'm going to go ahead and create a virtual disk. I'm going to select that clustered storage pool, give it a name. So I call it Clustered but disk and I want to use storage tiering so I'm going to do mirroring I could do two or three way because I have at least three disks in each of those tiers but I'm just going to do two way and I'll have 250 gigabytes of SSD and two terabytes of my standard hard disk drive storage click create to the confirmation And you can see that now updated in my storage pool view in server manager and again if I refresh this again I'll now see that virtual disk will show that I just created in failover cluster manager so it is consistent I'm then going to create a new volume so I'll select this cluster available storage for that disk I created I'll use the full size seems to be a little bug in the GUI right there So work through that by changing it to gigabytes, a, a bug in the GUI. I'll say drive letter, I'll give it a volume label. So clustered the disk. Click create to the confirmation. And once this is done, I'll now have a disk that's available in my clustering and I can just make it a CSV as normal. So that's completed. I then see that disk here as my clustered disk. I can now say, so this is in server manager, go to failover cluster manager and look at my disks. 
there it is I can now say make it a cluster shared volume that will come online and then it will be available as part of my standard cluster storage so you can see here this volume 8 is that 2.5 terabytes 2.4 terabytes and that's my new CSV and I can just use it so that's using clustered storage spaces very similar to just using a new normal storage space I can actually use PowerShell as well but it really is that simple and that concludes this video thank you